In 2021, physics has never been more important in addressing the big global challenges we all face today. Now, APS members from academia, national laboratories and industry are gathering virtually for the 2021 APS March meeting to communicate and explore these challenges together. And we're here to cover it all. This is APS TV. Hello and welcome to the second episode of APS TV, brought to you again from the virtual 2021 APS March meeting. What a packed show we have for you today. We'll be featuring some of the very best research in physics today. Broadening what we mean by physics and broadening who we collaborate with so that we can really form multidisciplinary collaborations. Particularly, we have some panels on what it's like to do a postdoc, diversity in careers. I'm interested in uh, these fundamentally challenging problems in quantum many-body physics. And uh, perhaps the March meeting needed to be assessed to see what we could improve. But first, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by uh, Jonathan Bagger, who, as you know, is the APS's uh, new CEO. Jonathan, welcome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's really a delight to be here with you today. Jonathan, you've picked such a, uh, an interesting time to decide to become the APS's uh, CEO. What do you think are some of the key challenges that you perceive face the physics community today? Well, my goodness, uh, you're right. It seems that everything is coming to a head all at once. I mean, I look at looking around me, I see a call for social justice, definitely accelerating effects of climate change, a global pandemic, and frankly, political instability in the world. And so all of these problems are going to require long term, multidisciplinary, multi generational solutions, fact based solutions. And I think physicists have an important role to play in that process. So what are some of the priorities that you have for the APS? One is certainly a focus on inclusion. That means not, uh, of course, including people, inviting people into physics, people who haven't been invited in before. But it means uh, also broadening what we mean by physics and broadening who we collaborate with so that we can really form multidisciplinary collaborations to tackle these pressing problems. And so at APS, we're thinking hard about that issues of how to build a more diverse and equitable physics community. And part of that lies in changing the culture of physics itself. And so this year we are actually pulling together people which are, are addressing not only uh, uh, issues of uh, 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 race and, and, and gender, uh, uh, but also actually of issues connected to ethics and professional behavior, so that we can look at how we do physics as well as what we do in physics. We've talked about a lot of the challenges, uh, but what are some of the scientific achievements, recent scientific achievements that you think we should be celebrating? Physicists from around the world have collaborated to design a new ventilator that went from concept to emergency use authorization in less than two months. And so we've, we've learned as a community that when we put our minds together, we can address issues that are critical for the future of humanity. Now, the Research Institute for Photon Science and Laser Technology at the University of Tokyo is part of a national research program to realize a super smart society, or Society 5.0, where cyberspace and the real world are intricately connected. Let's take a look. Stella is a network of about 100 researchers from the University of Tokyo and eight other institutions. Stella is uh, really unique endeavor to understand and simulate all the elements of laser processing comprehensively. Join 
joined now by Delilah Gase to talk about the uh, Graduate Student Affairs Programme uh, here at the APS 2021 March meeting. Thank you ever so much indeed for joining us today. Thank you, Stephen. Glad to be here. How has COVID impacted the FGSA and the work that you're doing? COVID has impacted the FGSA and our work um, in an interesting way. Um, first of all, like many of the boards of APS, um, we have a diverse membership for our executive committee who is responsible for putting on the programming and whatnot. So we are used to working remotely from one another. However, it has affected the kinds of programming that we've been able to do. Last year, um, during the first virtual um, March and April meetings, we ended up canceling our um, planned um, sessions, but those sessions are now going to run this year and we are on track to plan sessions for the next um, set of meetings. In addition to that, um, one of the big things we do for our members is we offer travel awards for students looking to go to meetings. Now these awards um, are able to come in the forms of reimbursements like they traditionally have, but also as fee waivers up front to try to take off the financial burden from students. What are some of the FGSA issues being tackled at this year's meeting? APS still has made a big effort to put in programming that will allow students to present their work, of course, which is important, but to also connect with their peers, um, potential colleagues and mentors, uh, being a, via a bunch of networking sessions, in addition to uh, the programming that will expose them to different career opportunities and what it's like to do postdocs and other kinds of uh, continued studies. What are some of the exciting events planned for this year's meeting? There are several interesting events at this year's meetings that I think are particularly interested for graduate students um, and our membership as FGSA. Particularly, we have some panels on what it's like to do a postdoc, diversity in careers, and there's also this cool uh, national lab and company networking event where people will be able to network virtually. So let's now take a look at the postdoc experience at Wiseman Institute of Science in Israel. Tel Aviv is a city that never sleeps. Beautiful beaches, amazing restaurants, great weather. Not too far away from Tel Aviv, there's another place that never sleeps, the Weizmann Institute of Science. In that spirit, we created AMOS, a center for quantum physics that investigates atomic, molecular, and optical physics. AMOS is the home for more than 18 research groups with more than 100 graduate students, a well-funded postdoc program, this is a very nice place to live, to do physics. Amos focuses on AMO research from ultra-fast lasers all the way to quantum optics and uses cutting-edge laboratories to perform its science and research. All we ask is that you come curious and ready to collaborate with top-tier research in our laboratories. We'll take care of the rest. Imaging is a powerful tool, and when you use cryo-electron microscopy, the atomic resolution of the specimen is incredibly telling. Experts at the Stanford SLAC Cryo-EM Center are helping scientists all over the world take advantage of this incredible resource. I would not have imagined five years ago that I'm doing what I'm doing today. This is unbelievable. In the context of the COVID, for example, we can image the whole coronavirus. We saw uh, all the amino acid arrangements that form this uh, spike and also we can see the sugar that attached to the spikes as well. Those kinds of information is useful because all the antiviral drugs or vaccine is tackling the spikes. There's so much to engage with at the APS March meeting and APS TV is bringing you all the very latest physics news and highlights from the meeting, from labs, universities and corporations across the globe. And here's how to watch on the front page of the virtual meeting platform. 
on a dedicated page at the APS website and on our YouTube channel and Twitter. Now, the Advanced Laser Light Source is a world-class research center hosting a wide variety of ultra-fast light sources and end stations for dynamic imaging and control in matter, particle acceleration, and applications and material processing. ALS is a user facility open to researchers from academia, government and industry interested in the development and the application of novel ultra-short light sources and particles. We joined ALS because of its unique infrastructure, home of the most powerful laser in Canada, and because of the cutting-edge research that's being done in the facility. By working in ALS, I have gained an invaluable experience of working with highly intense and ultra-fast laser sources. I learned all my experimental skills in optics and also a lot of theoretical knowledge. The team at the Los Alamos National Science Center includes a diverse array of scientists, all seeking to solve problems ranging from the fundamental to the applied, from understanding the origins of the universe to seeing inside nuclear fuel rods and dinosaur fossils. So one of the really neat things about Lance is that we use the protons we generate and accelerate to do a whole variety of things. And there are, there are three experimental facilities we have where we use those protons directly. Um, the rest, we actually use those protons to make neutrons. So we will slam those protons into a, a heavy nucleus and spit out a bunch of neutrons. And then we do the, use those neutrons to do things. And now this year's Kavli Symposium at APS, featuring outstanding physicists and their breakthroughs, is focusing on machine learning. One of the panel, Roger Melko of the University of Waterloo, tells us more about this rapidly developing field. My talk will be on machine learning and the complexity of quantum simulation. So I'm interested in uh, these fundamentally challenging problems in quantum many-body physics and how machine learning might help us solve them. At the March meeting, there's a lot of condensed matter physicists and quantum information people, and we're interested in problems like solving high temperature superconductivity or understanding the physics of frustrated magnetism. And we have a rich history as physicists in using simulation techniques to try to attack these problems. What machine learning has given the community in the last three to five years is a, a sort of a new toolbox of simulation techniques that we can use to address these fundamentally interesting problems. To all the APS members out there, I think the March meeting is one of the most special times uh, in our year where we all get together. So I know we're all missing each other, but it's also a great opportunity to welcome a new community into the APS, uh, you know, physics, network and that's the you know rich and diverse community of machine learning practitioners which I believe will be part of this meeting uh, going forward into the future. Quantum SeaTech is a Chinese pioneer and leader in commercialized quantum information technology or QIT and is becoming one of the world's biggest manufacturers and providers of QIT enabled ICT security products and services. Quantum SeaTech is China's pioneer in quantum information industry. Our primary task is to transform quantum communication from the academic papers to the real products and services. 
Our slogan is Quantum Secures Every Beat. Our dream is to build quantum information networks, such as quantum internet. We cherish the cooperation with any individuals who have the same dream. So, let's work together. Now, a look at a working group based at Princeton University and CERN, focusing on analyzing data from the compact muon solenoid CMS experiment at the Large Hadron Collider to study tau leptons. The last few years, there has been a real big push to find objects that don't quite look like things in the past. And that means new triggers, which means that we need a new way of selecting events. If we already knew what we were doing, we would have discovered it by now. And so when we tackle what looks like the same problem, we actually do it in, in a uniquely different way. And that really comes from the breadth of the backgrounds of the different people. I think these diverse backgrounds gives people quite a lot of perseverance and it's something that I've seen in my team and in the work that they do. It also gives my group a, a wide variety of perspectives to try to solve these new and complex problems we have at the Compact Mu and Solenoid Experiment. Blue Force are uh, pioneers in cryogenic measurement systems, and they're also focused on quantum technology. Blue Force is a Finnish company that is specialized in cryogenic measurement systems. These are systems that can take you down to temperatures a few thousands above absolute zero in temperature. So in Blue Force, the core technology is the cryogenics, but our users are using this cryogenics to cool down and measure their samples. And especially in quantum technology, this is a very important aspect of the measurements that are done. The way Blue Force is focusing in this field is to create a scaled-up solution for their systems. And one step we took was to start focusing on how to make this measurement infrastructure easier and more qualified for cryogenics. The APS March Meeting Task Force aims to provide an optimal experience for all participants. APS TV takes a look at how the task force has been working on new challenges for the virtual 2021 APS March Meeting. APS March Meeting Task Force was called together by the APS Council. The thinking was there were times changing and uh, perhaps the March meeting needed to be assessed to see what we could improve. The task force is still in uh, process. We're gathering our conclusions together. One very important part of this process will be a survey which will be sent out to all March meeting attendees very soon after the virtual March meeting this year. And it's going to contain a lot of key and we hope really interesting questions about the future of the March meeting. To give you an idea of, of some of the really interesting questions that um, the survey is going to cover. And some of the things are just for you know, what do you feel about a meeting in person and what would you like to see? Some of it is what, what to do with the online component and then, and then a bunch of other questions because once you start thinking about, well, how could you make it different? Do people want it to be different? What are the cost benefit trade-offs? You could see why we're, we really, we want to do the survey because uh, we think moving forward, also this will be a mechanism for continuing to make, you know, take, have the meeting take advantage of technology as it develops. 
we could make the meeting better, I'm sure, based on what we know so far and the input so far. And, and, and to me, that's the great strength of the meeting is the breadth of fields and the, you know, and the ability for the attendees to really get, you know, really broad, ex broad exposure to so many exciting things in, in the various areas of physics. Now to Japan and the University of Tokyo Research Institute for Photon Science and Laser Technology, which promotes collaboration between industry, academia and university departments. In particular, the Institute is accelerating research in optical science. The research is to examine how atoms, molecules, and materials behave under intense laser irradiation. For example, we are developing various new methods to accurately calculate the electron dynamics driven by laser field and electron energy transfer from laser to electron. We focus on laser manufacturing here, thinking of light matter interactions and artificial intelligence, such as deep learning. Combining this research area, we aim to establish a cyber-physical system in laser processing. From Japan to South Korea now, where experimentalists and theorists are working to identify emergent phenomena and discover new physics. It's the Center for Correlated Electron Systems at the Institute for Basic Science. We want to combine the strongly correlated electron physics with topological physics. We can maybe generate a new research area. We found the, the mathematical way to describe the topological property of the system with the space-time emergence symmetry. We try to provide the right environment for scientists from uh, all over the world, and they produced very exciting results. And finally, Scientists and researchers at UTSA are trying to level the playing field in physics by training and guiding a diverse group of students to make an impact in the field. I'm Adila Malik and I go to the University of Texas at San Antonio. My name is Adrian Gonzalez. I'm a uh, physics major here at UTSA. UT San Antonio has been growing for some time and is really uh, finding itself right now. And uh, that growth is really allowing us to do more and more exciting experiments and bring in more and more people. We're, we're young um, and you get that vibe across campus so it is a very fun place to be. I focus on tri-structure isotropic particles and uh, their failure modes. My research right now is on the spintronics field. You can do everything from playing with lasers to um, observing stardust to uh, figuring out how nanoparticles help you cure cancer. We're in a position to really uh, even the playing field, to really bring people in that have completely different perspectives and strengthen science in the US and in the world, and at UTSA we can really do it. That's it, I'm afraid, now for us from our second show from the 2021 virtual APS March meeting. But there is more to come. Join us tomorrow to find out what a new US administration means for APS, as well as bright beams and shock physics. See you then. Music